The first step is to open the bag, then remove the sterile pouch and the handle. Next, open the sterile pouch, remove the tubing and the paper band. Remove the cap from the sterile spike and insert into the fluid bag using standard aseptic technique. Allow the air check to fill completely. If needed, squeeze below the air check ball to release it. Open the canopy on the life flow handle and insert the syringe as shown. Note that the milliliter markings on the syringe are visible and that the inlet tubing fits into the notch on the right side of the handle. Close the canopy and remove the foam trigger lockout. Now, with the life flow pointed upward, cycle the trigger until all air has been purged from the syringe and tubing. Continue cycling until force reducer and outlet tubing are primed. Using standard aseptic technique, attach the life flow Y tubing to the patient's IV access. Begin to infuse fluid by squeezing the handle. Each stroke delivers 10 milliliters and total volume delivered can be calculated by counting the number of strokes or by noting the total volume of fluid remaining in the bag. Note that one hand remains free to monitor the infusion site, assess patient response to treatment, and address other patient care issues. Monitor the fluids throughout the infusion and stop infusing before the bag is empty. You should always stop infusing if the level of the air check ball starts to drop. This is an indicator that you're out of fluid. Connect a new fluid bag and allow the air check to refill. Then resume infusion. If the ball reaches the bottom of the chamber, the air check will seal and the trigger will stop returning. This means you have to stop infusing, disconnect from the patient, and reset the air check. First, spike a new bag and wait for the air check to fill completely. Second, squeeze below the ball to release it. The third step is to check for air in the line. Reprime the line if needed, and then reconnect to the patient. Note that the quick start guide in the Life Flow bag contains step-by-step -step instructions on the setup and priming of the device. When loading the syringe, Make sure to seat the syringe in the blue shuttle. If not seated correctly, the shuttle will not engage the syringe. The force reducer makes infusion easier and smoother through small catheters. As the force reducer becomes saturated, the life flow trigger will be noticeably harder to squeeze. A short pause between squeezes will allow excess fluid within the force reducer to dissipate. With a 24-gauge IV, after each trigger cycle, a short pause will be necessary. It may be useful to say to yourself, go slow for better flow. If continued resistance is noted after, check for line patency and infiltration. Do not use with non-power injectable ports, picks, and CVCs. Check patency of the IV site by slow compression of the handle during the first 10 milliliters of infusion. If extravasation or resistance is noted, switch to an alternate IV access site. Continue to check the IV for patency throughout infusion. If you accidentally release the air check ball when the chamber is empty, air will pass through the air check and into the tubing. You must then cycle all air out of the tubing before reconnecting. Do not release the ball when the air check is empty. Using the life flow, a trained user can on average deliver one liter of fluid through a 20 gauge catheter in less than four minutes. The life flow should be discarded after 24 hours of use or after infusing four liters of fluid.